<clears throat> What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Shadowlands video. Let's go. How are you guys doing today? Get your coffees. <clears throat> Kick back, relax. Let's do another build preview heading into 9.2. Now, what are we talking about today? Of course, we are talking about Witch Doctor Wolf Bones. So, this is just the next one on the list. We're, we're going through them all. We have done Legacy. We've done Skybreakers. Right? We've done um, Primal Lava. And we've done uh, Doom Winds. That was our last video. Now we're moving into Witch Doctor Wolf Bones. And this is exciting. This has been touted, of course, as the single target build. <clears throat> which is okay. That's not not an it's not an unfair characterization of this legendary. It has I would say the best single target bonuses, but I don't think it's a pure single target build. And I'll show you when we get to AoE how much AoE damage you can actually pump out with this. So let me get my notes. Let me get this over here. <clears throat> Something stuck in my throat. I apologize. Let me get this. Put this here. Put this here. Uh okay. We're ready. So, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about what does Witch Doctor Wolf Bones do? Stat priorities. How do those change? Talents and tier set bonus. The tier set bonus is a very big component of this. This is just a little spoiler alert. This this uh, legendary has the best like tier set interaction of all of them, in my opinion. The most synergies. The talents will be actually variable depending on what you're doing. Covenant choice. I think those are basically two covenant choices you're going to want to make. We'll get into that. Then I'll, I'll do a demonstration of, of how it all works, and then I'll tell you where to craft this thing, okay? That is the lineup for the video. So, let's uh, get excited. Let's get into it. <clears throat> let's start off by talking about what does this thing do? What does the Wish Doctor Wolf do? Of course, each uh, uh, increases the chance to get a stack of Maelstrom Weapon by 3%. Whenever you gain a stack of Maelstrom Weapon, the cooldown of Feral Spirits goes down by 2 seconds. So... This is all about Feral Spirits, of course. That's what this build is. And you're going to be running Elemental Spirits. I'll get to that in a minute. But this is all about Feral Spirits. And basically, you'll have them up all the time. Like, I think the last test that I did, let's look at this. Feral Spirits were up for 75% of this fight. Right? It's a 2 minute and 40 second fight. They're up for 2 minutes of that. So I probably didn't even play it. You could probably play that better and you would actually have them up for even longer. But on average, across all the different little tests that I was doing, Feral Spirits was up for 90% of this fight. 90%. Um, Feral Spirits was up for 72% of this fight. 79% of this fight. So you can see this is the build, right? This is how it works. So um, this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to cast Wolves on cooldown all the time and you're going to be getting the bonuses from elemental spirits which is going to fuel the rest of your build and what's really cool about this build is that the wolves give you three different buffs right depending on the elemental uh, spirits buff that you're getting and that really helps to enable different talent choices that you might want to make so um that's really really cool we're going to get to that in a minute let's let's switch over to stat priorities how does this change your stat priorities well first of all you're going to want 35 36 percent haste of course you're still going to want that and then you can either pivot into mastery or crit and that depends on what setup you want to run if you're going to run a storm uh, uh storm strike based setup then you really don't want mastery because storm strike doesn't benefit from mastery right not in the same way like you don't get the damage you can have a chance to get your Stormbringer proc, but that's you're going to be getting millions of chances to get your Stormbringer proc anyway. So what you're looking for out of Mastery is damage. And if you're doing a fire-based build, then sure, Mastery is great. If you're going for Hot Hands, Lashing Flames, Nova, you can run these setup, this talent setup with the Wolves, and you're going to want Mastery. If you're running a Storm Strike build, excuse me, where you have Storm Flurry, Ellie Assault, Elemental Blast, maybe on a single target, then you're going to want, like, Crit or Versatility. You're not, Mastery is not going to help you as much, 
certainly not as much. It's not a dead stat by any means. Cert like your lightning bolt still benefits from it. Your flame shock spreading benefits from mastery. There's like a million other things, right? It's not that much of a difference, but I'm just giving you the actual min max here. If you're doing a storm strike focus, you probably want crit. If you're doing a fire focus, you can get, you can go with mastery either one. Okay. So that's the stat pretty. Let's get into the talents. Cause this is where it really gets interesting. So, and the tier set bonus, I'll get to that in a second. There's a couple different ways to set this up. In an AoE situation, I think you almost always want Fire Nova. Okay? That's just the bottom line. Because of the baseline spreading of Flame Shock, the chances of you having a Fire Wolf out all the time is very high. I'm, I'm talking, like, very high. Like, if we look at... Um, was it this one? What was the uptime? 80%. There was a better one, right? Feral Spirit uptime... 72 is right here 89 percent feral spirit uptime so if you have an 89 percent feral spirit uptime the chances of you having a fire dog out is pretty high okay let's just put it that way it's um it's pretty freaking high and you can have multiple dogs out at the same time you can have up to like six i think or seven i've had six at a time and you're gonna see that hopefully in the testing when we get there but um Talent, talent choice wise, you can do a fire build. If you take Lashing Flames, this is a big note. Pay attention to this. This is a really big note here. If you take Lashing Flames, you must take Hot Hand. If you want to do the tab targeting, Lashing Flames, buffing all your Flame Shocks, you must take Hot Hand because you don't have Primal Lava Actuators reducing the cooldown of Lava Lash anymore. So if you don't take Hot Hand, then Lashing Flames is literally a dead talent to you because you're going to press Flame Shock like once and then you're going to buff it with lava lash and then you have to wait nine seconds to buff the next flame shock whereas if you take hot hand you get a hot hand proc your lava lash is on a two second cooldown so then it'll it'll come back you can you can really benefit from lashing flames so if you don't want if, if you don't want to take lashing flames just take elemental blast and storm flare i mean you can do that setup too but if you're going to take lashing flames you kind of have to take hot hand that's my that's my little tldr there either way i think you want fire nova on single target, you certainly want Elemental Assault. But on AoE, you want Fire Nova. Okay? Everybody following so far? This is locked down here. I mean, you have to take Elemental Spirits. Of course, this is the entire build is wrapped up in this talent right here, plus this Legendary. This is the whole build. So, I'm sorry you can't take anything else down here. Sundering is just kind of a must. We were talking about it on stream the other day about how much we like Crashing Storm. I like Crashing Storm. It just needs to be buffed. What they should do is just bake the 20% nature and physical damage from Earth and Spike into Crashing Storm. And that would make it a very viable talent, I think, in my opinion. But anyway, moving on. This is the setup you're going to want to run. If you want to run, to run a more Storm Strike focused build, you can go Ellie Blast, Storm Flurry, Fire Nova. You see the difference there? This is Storm Strike. This is, uh, this is Lava Lash focused either one is fine why is either one of those builds fine well because the dogs will be giving you different buffs there's one buff that gives you storm strike and wind fury damage there's one buff that just gives you all damage you deal you do 35 percent more damage as ice damage which again is a mastery if you have mastery that's going to benefit the ice dog and then the third build that you can do is a fire build because there's a fire dog that gives you 20 percent more fire damage stacking up multiple times so two out of the three dogs are fire and ice which is mastery based and the third dog is storm strike based which would be like not mastery based but that's why i think mastery is so beneficial in this build no matter what you can take crit as well but i think it's okay if you have mastery because two out of your three wolves are going to be giving you a buff that benefits from mastery okay clear clear as mud clear as mud i don't know what i'm saying I was trying to think of something else to say there, but then I just said mud again, and now it's just a bad joke. <laughs> That's the talent setup, okay? That's what you're looking at. This is for AoE. For single target, you always want Ellie Blast over Lashing Flames, and then you always want Ellie Assault. This is single target. You could go here or here for single target. It doesn't matter, okay? So... Here's your AoE fire. Here's your um, AoE storm strike build. Okay. And then here's your single target build. Make sense? Clear as mud? <laughs> I'm going to stop saying clear as mud. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Let's do it. Um, 
Now, I I did test the difference between Storm Flurry and Hot Hand in terms of the amount of times that like you the the reduction the cooldown reduction on your Feral Wolves because both Lava Lash and Storm Strike have a chance to reduce the cooldown of Feral Spirits by giving you Maelstrom weapon stacks. This is really important to understand. When you deal damage with a melee weapon, you have a chance to gain a Maelstrom stack, stacking up to a blah blah blah. So both Storm Strike and Lavalash have a chance to reduce the cooldown of your wolves with this legendary, right? Because every time you gain a stack of Maelstrom, you reduce the cooldown. Now, Storm Flurry gives Storm Strike an additional chance to proc again, which you would think, okay, that's automatically going to get you more cooldown reduction on the dogs, but it doesn't actually do that. I literally just tested this, and they, I had my uptime on Feral Spirits was like 75% and 72%. It was actually higher with Hot Hands, so... It just depends on how lucky you get with, like, the cooldown reduction procs, right? So don't worry about either one of these talents. Pick whichever one you want to do more, okay? Um, Okay, the tier set bonus. Let me get... This is really important. So the tier set bonus, this legendary utilizes the tier set bonus more than any other legendary that we're going to look at, period. Because here's what it says. Spending a Maelstrom weapon stack whatever, spending Maelstrom weapon, period, has a 3% chance to give, give you a wolf, so that's a 15% chance every time we use a spender. And then your Feral Spirits attacks have a chance to give you Stormbringer, which is great. That's fine for this build. Like, even if you do a fire-based build, you're still going to be pressing Storm Strike a decent amount because you are you don't have a huge cooldown reduction on Lava Lash anymore from Primal Lava Actuator. So there should be a regular sort of rotation there. But the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the two pieces really what we're interested in because we're buffing those wolves with elemental spirits, right? And we're getting our own spirits cooldown, uh, cool, feral spirits cooldown down quickly. So this legendary is like all in on the tier set. <clears throat> it really utilizes the, the tier set very, very well. So once you get the two-piece bonus, though, of the tier set, you're kind of rocking and rolling with this build. So if you're thinking of taking this into 9.2, um, and you, you could get, like, after the end of, like, week two, you could probably have two pieces of your tier set. And you're basically online. For the purposes of this, your build is like online. If you have this le this one legendary here, plus the tier set bonus, you're rocking and rolling, man. Obviously, once we get the double legendary effect coming like later in 9.2, like about, whatever, almost a month in, once you get to Chapter 7, then you're really rocking and rolling. But you can get this build online very, very quickly, okay? That's what I'm trying to tell you there. So tier set bonus is awesome. Synergizes perfectly well with this build. Um the the uh the different talents we talked about now the different talents that you pick are also going to change the conduits that you go for let me just talk about this really really quickly so obviously if you're going to do a fire based build you want magma fist right for the lava lash damage if you're doing a storm strike build then you can ditch the lava lash one and potentially go into like a different direction like for example if you were necro lord and you wanted to go in the middle here to get the crit from Hero Mirror's arsenal, then that's okay with the Storm Strike build because you still get to put in your other two um, potencies, which you're going to need. You need these two for sure. Um, and then the third one you can kind of ditch. But if you're doing the fire build, you might want to sneak over here and get the Lava Lash one. But it just it, it, it's up to you. It really it's not going to make that much of a difference. Okay, it's it's just a slight. This is something you have to play around with. I'll show you with the Night Fae one as well. The Night Fae one is even more pronounced if, with uh, Korean or Korean because he gets that crit multiplier in the middle as well. Right, that's a really big deal. So um, anyway, something you can play around with. But I'm not going to touch too much on the Soul Binds uh, anymore. So. Covenant choices then. Let's switch over to Covenant choices. What are you going to choose um, for your Covenant if you're picking Witch Doctor Wolf Bones? <clears throat> of course, the obvious choice is Night Fae. That's what everybody's going to tell you to pick, and that is the obvious choice, and it is a good choice. It's a very, very good choice. I think in pure single target, this is absolutely the way to go. Okay? Like, this is absolutely what you want to be doing. It's also good in AoE, don't get me wrong, but on, on the single target side of things, it is absolutely really good. However, there's a case to be made for Necrolord, and I'm going to showcase the Necrolord build first, and then I'm going to switch over to the Night Fae one in a minute. So, the Night Fae one is the real big winner because it doubles down on this whole wolf archetype, right? It reduces the cooldown of your wolves. With the Night Fae one, you're basically going to cast your wolves, and then you're going to Fae Transfuse, 
and then you're going to cast your wolves again, and you'll have four wolves out right at the beginning. If you're doing a big pull in Mythic Plus, or if you're doing a raid boss, which is where you'll most likely take this build, is into the raid, that'll be in, like, your Lust window. So you just, like, Feral Spirit, Fate Transfuse, you have four dogs out with Lust. It's, it's just, like, disgusting, right? It's really, really good. So that's really good. You also get crit, 24% crit, which is really good. Um... And then uh, the Soulbind stuff, uh, whatever, that's fine. With Necrolord, it's a little bit different, right? It's about these haste windows that you're going to create for yourself. And it's much, much better in AoE because you can spread Flame Shocks, get the big Lightning Bolt to hit all those Flame Shocks, and then you have a massive haste window, and you put your dogs inside the haste window, and then you you are cooling your dogs down really, really quickly because your abilities are going so fast, and your dogs' auto attacks are hitting much more quickly, which triggers your tier set bonus much more often, okay? So these are the two things. I'm going to show you the Necrolord one, and then I'll show you the Night Fae one. The other two covenants are not really ones that you want to pick necessarily. Certainly the Kyrian one is just way too, like, clunky because I talked about in the other video, you can get two detonations out of this Raging Vesper Vortex Legendary, right? You use three damage abilities, and it detonates. You use three healing abilities, and it detonates again for 6,000 damage, which is great. That's a lot of damage, but it's like... You have to basically like spam Earth Shield on yourself. It's really weird and it's really clumsy. It's not the best thing. The Venthyr one is fine. You just get free passive flame shocks and you get the big burst of damage from Chain Harvest and then Chain Harvest cools itself down. It's it's great, but there it's kind of just all on its own. Like it's it's all it's good. You're doing flame shock damage and you can detonate those with Fire Nova. You can do that whole build. And then on top of that, you're going to have dogs out all the time. And hopefully you're getting fire dogs because the Venthyr one is a bit more of a fire build. And you're going to be getting lots and lots of uh, flame shock damage from the fire dogs if they're out. So, again, nothing wrong with it whatsoever. There just isn't like an immediate synergy with the Venthyr ability. Um, so I, that's why I'm always... The ones I try to showcase are the ones that have immediate synergies in my mind. So if you want to go Venthyr with Witch Doctor Wolf Bones, that's actually fine. You're going to get lots of extra passive damage, lots of AoE damage, yada, yada, yada. So let's move on to Necrolord. Let me showcase this build for you. So the Necrolord playstyle, of course, is all about the haste window that you're getting from Primordial Wave with the Lightning Bolts. I'm going to show you AoE, and then I'm going to show you single target, okay? Then we're going to switch to Night Fae, and I'm going to show you the same thing all over again, and you can decide for yourself. So again, we can put our Wind Fury Totem down. It doesn't matter. You want to channel Fleshcraft because I'm taking Plague Divisor Merilith for the mastery. For the purposes of this test, I am going to do a fire build. Okay? Everybody clear about that? We're doing the fire version. I'm going to have to alternate with the Lashing Flames buff. And here we go. Again, you're going to start Wolves first, then Flame Shock, then Lava Lash. Okay? Always Wolves first. Always with this build. Here we go. Wolves. Here we go. Spread it around. I'm going to do Primordial Wave over here. I'm going to detonate Lightning Bolt, and we go. We're doing the haste buff, haste buff, haste buff. 85% haste. We got a hot hand, Brock, which is great. Now we can spread our uh, Lava Lash around. We're going to Primordial Wave again. Lightning Bolt. We're still going with the haste buff. 99% haste this time. We got a Fire Dog, so we're doing extra fire damage. Our Wolves are back. They were probably back a long time ago. I keep forgetting to cast them. It's really bad. It's like the entire point of this build. So you can see how that works, though. We had our wolves in the haste window that we had, right? And look at our damage. It's almost at 20k. We're, like, sustaining 20k right now. That's going to go down eventually, but you can see what I'm talking about with this build. Wolves are back. We go again. We got a fire wolf. Look at two fire wolves. We have three fire wolves right now. Ah, oh, we lost one. You can see that's, like, 60%. We have three fire wolves right now. That's 60% more fire damage. Big fire nova. Fire Nova just did so much damage right there. Okay, Primordial Wave. And Lightning Bolt and go. Now, we don't have any dogs up, which is really tragic timing. That's okay. We'll get our dogs up here. There. We got our wolves up. They're, they're getting the haste buff. They're benefiting from that huge amount of haste we just got. Keep it going. We'll do a couple more rounds here. Dogs are coming back. See the cooldown of the dogs? Every time I press Chain Lightning, there's a chance I'll get a dog, right? Dogs are out. We got a Fire Dog again. That's really what we're looking for with this build. We like the Fire Dogs. Don't lose your Flame Shocks. There's a chance you can lose your Flame Shocks here if you're careless because we don't have 
primal lava actuators getting us our flame shocks back, right? So here comes primordial wave, and the dogs are back. Here we go, primordial wave. We got a reset. Oh my god, ready? Dogs, lightning bolt, and go 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 go. Big big haste, big haste, big haste, big haste here. Another primordial wave. We got a hot hand proc. Holy cow. Dogs are back again. Dogs are back again. That was like a 10 second dog cooldown. It's insane. It's insane. The dogs are coming back again. The haste is so good for the dogs because it gives you a, a chance to get them back. Um, just because your auto attacks are going so much quicker and your storm strikes are going so much quicker and your lava lash is going quicker and all that stuff, right? So that's that's it there. You can see that there. <clears throat> that's really respectable damage. It's something like 18 to 20k sustained. We were doing that's a, almost a three minute fight, and we were doing like 18k sustained. Like look at the uptime on our feral spirits. 80% uptime on feral spirits there. Okay. Our damage is, of course, going to be Flame Shocks because of Lashing Flames. That's why. And our Fire Nova detonations were huge. Look at all our fire damage. You know why our fire damage was so huge? Because of our friggin' fire dogs that we had. Look at the Molten Weapon uptime. This is the debuff that you put. Um, when you Lava Lash something with a fire dog up, you put a fire dot on them. How much damage did that do? It wasn't that much. That's okay. It did 40k. It's an extra 1.4%. Here's the extra bonus you can see is that the Spirit Wolves damage themselves. These are just the Wolves damage. 7% more damage just because the Wolves are up so much. It's really, really good. Really good. And you can see, um, like I was saying, the Splintered Elements buff, like you can chain that back to back. And it's the haste. The haste is what I'm trying to show you guys there. That these huge haste bonuses that you get are amazing because... They allow you to get your dogs back so quickly, right? This is how it works. When you deal damage with a melee weapon, when you deal damage with a melee weapon, that means your auto attacks, your storm strike, your lava lash, your crash, your sundering, like everything. This is this goes this procs so often when you have 99% haste all the time. Do you see see where I'm going with that? That's the benefit of taking um, Necrolord here now. Let's switch it up. Let's go entirely into a storm strike build instead. Just just to see. Actually, we'll go hot hands. We'll go hot hands. It's fine. Here's my single target setup. Are you ready for this? Single target setup. Once again, we're gonna flesh craft. We're gonna put our totem down because it doesn't matter as much. You want a dogs on pull. This is single target damage. Here we go. And we're taking Ellie Blast this time. We're going to Primordial Wave and Lightning Bolt because we got a bunch of dogs out. Give them some haste. The haste isn't as big. We're at 50% haste instead of 99, right? So it's not as good because it's just single target. That's obviously the way it goes. We didn't get a reset, but our dogs are back. We keep going. Oh, we got a hot hand proc. Here we go. This is big damage. We're at almost uh, 11k single target right now. Look at all the dogs we got. Every time you press it, I have five or six. Look at all the dogs right now. There's like five or six of them. They're all piled up. It's really cool how many you get. Hot hand proc again. Big damage from hot hand. We're sustaining like 10k. Single target here. Okay, dogs are coming up. I'm going to Primordial Wave into the dogs, into a Lightning Bolt, and we go. I should probably Lightning Bolt first, actually. But anyway, there's optimizations that I can make. Don't ever press Flame Shock unless it's the only button you can press. Because you're getting a free reset on Flame Shock every time you Lava Lash. Look at this damage, right? This is good damage. Like, this is crazy. <clears throat> so that's it right there. I mean, I'll do one more rotation here. You're going to see. Hot Hand again. That's really good. Boom, boom, boom. Ellie Blast. Hot Hand. Dogs are back. We go again. Our Primordial Wave's coming up. So we'll get the dogs. Hopefully we'll fit the dogs into that cooldown. Primordial Wave. Need a Lightning Bolt. Here it comes. Lightning Bolt. Big haste. Big haste. Higher chance to proc everything, right? Our haste is at 46%. So you can see that's how it works. We'll get the dogs back one more time. Storm 
some strike. Lightning bolt. You gotta make sure you use your spenders because they give you your wolves. Look at me. We got three ice, three lightning wolves right now. So our storm strike damage is really high. Three of those lightning wolves. Hot hand proc. I mean, this is just it. You can see the rotation. One more primordial wave. I know I said it last time, but let's let's get her done. Lightning bolt first, then dogs. Big haste. Big haste. Big haste. Big haste. Lots of fire wolves. Look at the fire damage we're doing. We're doing like 60% more fire damage right now. We got a reset on primordial wave too, which would have been crazy. You could do lightning bolt. That's it. I mean, you can see this is how it works. There's lots of glowing buttons to press, but it's pretty awesome, guys. Basically 10k sustain, right? So, <clears throat> how long was that? That was almost three minutes. That's a long time, right? So, 10k sustain over three minutes, that's pretty good. That's likely what you're what you're going to see on a fight. Um, and you can see Storm Strike and Lava Lash are right up there because we had so many hot hand procs. If instead you were to do a, a Storm Strike build with Storm Flurry, then obviously Lava Lash would be, would be quite a ways down there. But essentially, if you were to do that kind of build, then Lava Lash just becomes a... Um, a button to maintain um, <clears throat> your flame shock on the target. However, I do like going hot hands, and here's why. Because the dog, you can get fire dogs, and if you get a hot hand proc with a fire dog up, which we got multiple times in that fight, then you're you're really benefiting from that 20% more fire damage. You're leaning into that a bit. So if you go hot hands, you're kind of spreading yourself out, and you're, you're tackling all the different schools of of damage your lightning damage if you get a lightning dog you're doing storm strike and wind fury that's happening all the time if you get a fire dog you're getting hot hand lava lashes to buff that damage so you're dipping into that if you get a frost dog then you're just doing more damp more frost damage no matter what and we're investing in mastery already so um i do think that the hot hand build is a better way to go just because it if you get a fire dog if you get like three fire dogs in a row and you don't have the hot hand talent it feels really bad because you can't press lava lash as much as you want to right so that's just that would be my synopsis there is to say you really should i think take hot hand for the, that single target um build that you're working on there okay okay we're gonna flip to night fey <clears throat> we're flipping over to night fey let me just, um, let's go here. I don't know why dropping some frames, but that's okay. Okay, we're going to switch over and get this ability in my bar. I want to talk really, really quickly about the uh, soul bind because it, it can make a difference, you know, in, in AoE and stuff. It's not going to matter here, but I'm going Naya for the purposes of testing. You probably want Karain. Because of this, right? Damaging an enemy before they damage you increases your crit by 25%. That's disgusting in Mythic Plus. You're going to get that proccing on every single pack in Mythic Plus. But we can't get the benefit of it here because I'm just hitting the same targets over and over again. So bear with me. You know, you guys need to make a decision here what you want to do. Dreamweavers are okay with the Field of Blossoms. I understand there's good choices all around. For the purposes of this video, we're doing Naya. And we are going to go Magma Fist um, as well, okay? This is kind of the setup that I would run. So... What does the Night Fae one do? What's the difference between the Night Fae one and the Necrolord one? You don't get a big haste buff, but you do get insane dog uptime with the Night Fae build, okay? Because you get to press Feral Spirits into Fae Transfusion, and then you get to press Feral Spirits again. You're going to see it right here. Let me show you how it works. Again, always start with your dogs first, then do Flame Shock, Lava Lash, then Fae Transfusion, okay? So we go dogs, Lava Lash... Fae Transfusion. Dogs again. I just realized I'm still on my single target uh, build setup, but that's okay. Hot hand proc. Big damage here. We're getting our dogs back. Dogs are up again. I'm still rotating around. I got the Lashing Flames. Uh... Oh, no, I don't have Lashing Flames. Oops. I have Ellie Blast. So we're missing some damage there. I should go reset this, actually. Let me go reset this. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're going to reset right now. Got my dogs back. Uh, we'll, we'll change talents here. I have my single target set up again. That was, I need Fire Nova. My bad there. I'll show you in a second. The damage is, the damage is quite strong. Once again, though, I think you could, you could go with the Fire build or you could try Storm Flurry if you want to. 
Um, but either way, you definitely need Fire Nova. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with this build. I'll just show you this, okay? Just so it's like the same as it was before. We'll wait to about 15 seconds here for um, Fate Transfusion to come back. But you can see how many dogs I had at the beginning. I'm going to show you again. We'll basically get, you could get sometimes five or six dogs. If you get a tier set proc, then you'll have like five dogs out right at the beginning, which is crazy. Okay, here we go. Feral wolves, feral spirits into this spreading into Fate Transfusion. Okay, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. They're back. We got lots of fire dogs right now, so good damage. And they're gonna give you tons of storm strike procs, which is good. Wolves are back. Press them again. You can see how many wolves we have consistently. Right now we have like three ice wolves or something. So we're getting all that mastery damage. Fire Nova's back. The dogs are almost back again. The only issue with this build is sometimes lining up Fate Transfusion with the dogs, but you're going to see it right here. We have 30 seconds left on Fate Transfusion. I just summoned my dogs. I bet you we're going to get them back in time. Watch this. Watch the cooldown of the wolves. Fire Nova. There we go. Our wolves are coming back. They're going to be back right in time for our Fate Transfusion. Which is exactly what you want. So here they come. Wolves into Fate Transfusion. And we go again. And then our wolves are back again. We cast them again. Look how many wolves we have out at the same time. It's insane how many wolves you can get. It's really, really good. Big Fire Nova damage. Again, we just keep tab targeting for the Lashing Flames buff. We got a Hot Hands proc. That's why you have to take Hot Hands with Lashing Flames. Got it again. And there you go. I mean, you can see we'll, we'll do the rotation one more time with the dogs. Basically, you can always line up um, Fate Transfusion with your dogs. And the main way that you want to play it is you always want to be casting your wolves and then casting Fate Transfusion. So right now, our wolves are off cooldown and we press them. There's 20, 28 seconds left on Fate Transfusion. We will get it back in time. It sounds ridiculous, but we will. Here we go. They're coming back. You can see the cooldowns are lining up again. So our dogs are out. We're going to press them. We're going to do Nova. And we're going to do this into Fate Transfusion. And the dogs will be right back off cooldown again. And they're back. We cast them again. You can see how many dogs you get. The uptime of the dogs is insane. It's just crazy with this build. And we're getting crit right now. Big crit from Fate Transfusion. So you can see. That's it. That's how it works. Again, you can mess around with the talents, guys. Like, if you want, you could go Storm Flurry. Um, if you're going to go Storm Flurry, you can't go Lashing Flames. So you'd have to go Ellie Blast or Forceful Winds. I mean, it's fine. You could actually go Forceful Winds. If you get a dog that buffs Wind Fury damage, then then great. You're in business there. But Ellie Blast does lots of damage too. So you can mess around with this. I think the Fire Nova is always the way to go for the AoE portion. But you can mess around with the other talents a little bit if you want to. Okay? But you can see uptime on the Wolves was 72%. It's always going to be super high like that. And the damage from them is, again, 7.6%. It's it's really high. Almost the same as the Necrolord one, though, basically. But they, I think that this build does offer a huge amount of upfront damage right on pull. You can do Wolves into Transfuse into Wolves, and it's just tons and tons of upfront damage. So let's switch to the single target damage, a single target uh, portion. I think that this is where the damage should be better than the Necrolord, is in pure single target, in a pure like raid environment where... Um, you're doing single target. So we'll do the exact same setup that we did last time, and we're going to see how much better it's going to be, okay? Wind Fury Totem out. Dogs into um, 
flame shock into fate transition. We don't need to lava lash the flame shock, right? So, dogs. Dogs are up again. Let's cast them. Do we have like four dogs out? Maybe five? They're giving me Stormbringer procs like crazy, right? Which is why it's good to have Storm Flurry. Because you can get multiple procs on Storm Strike, which is really good. Get you your dogs back quicker. Dogs are back again. We're going to cast them. Lava Lash in this particular build is essentially just there to um, keep your flame shot going. <clears throat> dogs are up again. Multiple dogs. We have three lightning dogs right now. I Means Storm Strike's doing 11,000 damage. If you look at the tooltip, Storm Strike was doing 11,000 damage right there per hit. Because of the, the amount of wolves that we had up. Okay, yeah. wolves are back. And we'll fade transfuse off of it. Big, big window right here. Here we go. There we go. Four wolves out at a time. Our storm strike damage is 8,000 right now. You can see it bounce up and down depending on what dogs we get. It's pretty cool. You can see we're over 10k sustained. So similar to the Necrolord build, but it's more consistent, right? The Necrolord build really relies on the primordial wave resets, and if you don't get any of those, I think you're just you're just kind of sad. So this one is way more consistent. You're always going to have basically the same amount of damage, and um, you're always going to have big wolf uptime. Lots of wolves. We'll go one more rotation with the wolves, and then we'll call it a day. Just good to see, like, a very long, long fight. Um, really shows what kind of damage you're going to be able to do. So, again, Fate Transfusion's coming off cooldown. Our dogs are going to be off way before that. So, we're going to cast them. So, this will be an example of where it might not line up perfectly, depending on how many procs we get here. Two Frost Wolves. We're just doing 70% more damage as Frost right now. Look, at we're going to get the wolves back in time. Look at that. Fate Transfusion had 15 seconds left, and we got our wolves back in time. Look at that. That's insane. So we're going to wait for it. We're going to wait this extra, like, five or six seconds to get our wolves back off cooldown. And then we're going to go wolves into Transfuse. And wolves again. And that's it. That's the rotation. So you can see. About 10k sustain. A little bit more than 10k, honestly. Because that was a super long fight. Yeah, that was more than 3 minutes. So you can see wolf uptime, once again, is almost 70% even on single target. Which is really, really good. That's really good. So the damage from the wolves is way higher. Look at that. 17% of our damage is in the wolves. Just their auto attacks. So it's really good. Their extra damage, you know, here's the here's the ice damage here, here's the molten damage here, and the storm strike damage. You can't it's hard to calculate it because it's just in storm strike and wind fury. But you can see guys that this is this is pretty good on single target. But I do think that both builds are actually fine. Let me just <clears throat> let me just run up here. Do a little comparison. So I think that both builds, both Necro and Night Fae, are perfectly fine. Um, they both will, will keep your um, Feral Spirit uptime extremely high. We're talking about at least 70% or higher. Um, this is 75% on this fight. Like That's what your uptime will be on every single fight. 78%, 74%. This is what you're looking at whether you go Necro or Night Fae. If you go Necro Lord, you're looking at those big haste windows. I think it's better in AoE because you can spread more lightning bolts and get a bigger haste buff onto yourself. And that's just like it fuels your Maelstrom weapon stacks, which reduces the cooldown of your wolves, gets them back in time. And then you you can either go for whichever build you want, right? You can go hot hands. I think you're always going to take Fire Nova in AoE situations. 
um, to make sure that you've got big, big damage. It's just big damage now. But you can go a complete fire build if you want to do that. And all the fire dogs that you have out will be giving you 20% more damage times however many dogs are out. If you want to go for a Storm Strike build, then that's perfectly fine. You can go Ellie Blast, Storm Flurry. I would still keep Fire Nova in, in AoE. And then for single target, you want to go Elemental Assault, right? So that's the build. The Night Fae one simply is more consistent. It's going to get you your dogs back at the guaranteed amount. You just have to manage the Fae Transfusion a little bit in case, that, in case your dogs aren't coming back at the exact right time. But it's basically worked out every single time for me. So... Either one of these builds is going to serve you perfectly fine moving into 9.2. They're both going to work really well in single target. The Night Fae one is probably a little bit better in single target. That would be my my uh, you know general take on that. Uh, but they're both going to work perfectly fine. So, yeah, that's it for the demonstration. Let's talk really quickly about where do you want to craft this thing. Of course, it's going to be on your finger because the shoulder is going to be a tier set piece, right? That's where all the tier set pieces are. So you want to do it on your on, on a ring. This is where you're going to want to put it. So if you don't have it on a ring right now, you need to go put it on a ring um, so that you can get your tier set pieces and craft that stuff everywhere else. OK, um, <clears throat> that's my final thoughts there. I think that, again, you could also run Venthyr if you want to go Venthyr with this build. It's just sort of passive AoE damage. The reason I didn't show it is because it doesn't have any direct synergies, whereas the Night Fae one, of course, Fae Transfusion does have direct synergy. It reduces the cooldown of your spirits really quickly. It gets more of those dogs out there. And the um, Necrolord one also has synergy because of all the haste that you get. And if you have your dogs inside your haste window, then, of course, they're going to be procking your tier set bonus more often, which is awesome. Get your Storm Strike back more often. There's, It's just a really, really solid build all around. So it's up to you guys. Pick whichever build you want. And, yeah, have fun with this build. I think that this actually works perfectly fine in AoE. That's the one big point I want to make at the end here is that this is sort of touted as the single target build, but it works perfectly fine in aoe situations so if you want to build this if you're going to be primarily raiding in 9.2 and you're going to be doing mythic plus on the side just go build this it's fine you can bring this into a mythic plus environment and it will work it will work just fine so there you go guys thank you so much for watching thank you for all the likes and subscribes keep them coming i really appreciate it and let's talk more in the comments below and i will see you in the next video